Hello. So here's my uh, my simulation. I have this here. Start that script up. This brings up the GUI, and it also um, initializes the uh, procedure so that it can flatten string arrays. And there's credit here brought from a uh, website. It'll be referenced in the report as well. So, first of all, it looks like a pretty plain scene. However, when you um, should really view it from a two panel view, so two panes side by side. And here we have the, um, the view from above. See, so yeah, I've got some illustrative text there. Just turn all these reference layers on. So I'm not going to affect anything except for the the actual um, the curve. And now the the camera aim is parented to a point on there. So where, wherever the the, uh, the death ray goes, the beam that leaves the camera following it as well as this fluid emitter here, is attached both to the point in space on the x and z axes, but on the y axis it's constrained to the geometry, so it's going to go up and down the hill while it is moving around from above. So basically, let's take a look at the script. So animate the ray position curve to a path you like, so select curve. It brings up the curve. I've already got some uh, positions keyed in on here, but for the sake of this, let's just say you want a position there, you key it in, and then another position, say down here, you key it in towards the end or something. You'll get a straight line. That's just simple animation, so we won't bother with that. This is already something set up as well. Okay. Now this is um. Quite good. I've got a a radial a radial field emitter attached to this in the same fashion, so it's constrained to the geometry and the control curve. And you can set the beam values. And doing that will allow sorry, will allow the different controls for the radius of the blast or the affected area as well as the power and that's just the, uh, the magnitude and the max distance and magnitude it plugs into so you want to set beam values they're pretty good at defaults of course you can go higher you can use the field to type it in but that'll be overkill and we just want it to work so set beam values, and it also scales a collision object, which is hidden, so that you can collide with the geometry. And then we're going to cache and play simulation, and then that runs through, see in this screen here, slowly but surely, creating a, <coughs> excuse me, creating the cache and playing the simulation. One of the interesting things that I've done is used contact data flags on the rigid bodies to find when there's been a contact. So for instance, when it plays through, once it's finished caching, this, uh, this ceiling here, this roof, contains a contact data flag to turn on the shatter when there's a collision. So when the beam collides with it, it shatters the object, otherwise the shatter pieces would just fall to the ground straight at the start of the simulation. So I'll be right back when that's finished caching. Shouldn't be lo very long. Okay, so now it's coming towards the end of the cache. It's caching the rigid bodies and the uh, fluid as well. So that one button caches everything. And you can see next to it I have the delete cache button and the close button. They're pretty self-explanatory. Obviously deletes the cache and this one closes the script. It is important though to, when you first open the scene, just to open the script first so that you can use the effect of the collision detection because it uses the procedure included in the script to uh, collapse, sorry, to flatten an array to give out the number of names that are in it instead of um, 
how many names are in it. So you can see it's still going pretty slow. It goes faster if we turn the fluid layer off so that it doesn't have to render it out. So that's what's in the, in the window is meant to be watched in. Oh, it's still, still going through a little bit. So when it comes through on repeat, we should see it sped up a little bit more. You can see there, it's shattered, there's bits hanging off each other. It's quite a good realistic effect. Of course, you've got the sky dome in the background and this terrain that's been made in mud box and textured too. So yeah, you see. Cuts that up, shatters it. On the actual, um, sorry, on the actual geometry, it's got a glow texture on the inside where it's been cut with a laser. And here we go. You see, it has a, it's triggered the shatter because that barrel collided with the, um, with the support post, and the planks have collapsed because they're held up by the shattered posts and we also have lost something here okay so you might have noticed something going on there I just check the collision layer on this is zero instead of minus one so minus one's the layer that I want for the ground so that everything bounces off it, which it should have been set, but there must have been a previous save that I reverted to where it hasn't been set. Okay. So I won't put you through the caching again, but I'll come back with a play blast of the finished piece, and hopefully you enjoy that. Okay, so while that is um, going through, I will show you some of the uh, expressions that I have for causing the shatters. They are on certain things like these uh, slats. Everything's set to reference at the moment, so it won't show up. Let's grab one from the um, from the moving meshes so for instance these um, these active rigid bodies are triggered when the side post shatters so we have to go into the side post see it, the shatter is off at the moment in the expressions we're looking here and this is just a set that the time if the time is at the start so one then the, uh, the pillar's shatter is turned off. And here we have just a string to grab whatever the rigid body's name is this time. And it's basically the same on every piece that I've put this expression on, even the ceilings. In fact, the ceilings have something extra, which is quite good. This one's a good example. So if the rigid body is at the uh, time one, then do all this. So basically just set, setting up all the, um, the shatters to be off and ignoring all the collisions for the active rigid bodies, or just ignoring everything for the active rigid bodies. So that will create basically a static scene, a static object. The only things that are moving this building are the barrels at the start when they just sort of find their place. So yeah, grab some rigid body. Um, just um, creating a couple of ints and these are the ones that are going to reflect on these attributes here so the contact count which is reflected here get the attribute of my rigid body 55 here dot contact count and that's basically how many times 
where Rich's body is making contact in that frame. And this one's to compute the unique amount of uh, contacts. So if it's hitting one object four times, because it might do that, because there's several faces hitting it, then you need to use this. And that's the reason we need the script, um, the procedure in the main script at the bottom here. So that's basically just giving out how many items there is rather, rather than producing duplicates. So you see there, if there's blue, blue, red, green, blue, green, you've only got blue, red, and green in there effectively, and that's what it gives out. This one isn't my work. This is from a uh, person called Julian Love. So credit to them. And basically it uses that procedure and creates a uh, unique count. So if you've got two objects hitting it, it'll say two instead of um, say 16 faces hitting each other. So basically, if the unique contact count is more than zero, i.e. there's been a hit taking place, then shatter the ceiling, shatter the pillars, because this beam here, for this simulation, is, it's a powerful beam, so it's going to take out the whole building pretty much. And turn off the ignore, so now all the rigid bodies are active on here. And that will allow them to uh, start their simulations and be affected by the radial field and the gravity, as well as the uh, collision objects that's invisible in the year. So that's about it that I have to show you on the expressions. I've had a great time making this. Uh, hopefully you like it too. Thanks for watching.